Hey guys, Jason Timothy here, musicsoftwaretraining.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you ways to humanize your drum programming so it doesn't sound robotic and it has that kind of human life to it and dynamic. So with that, we've got this simple drum beat that I made here. All right, just that there. And if you could hear, it sounds just static and robotic. Everything's right on the grid. If we turn on the metronome here, you could just hear how everything's just lining up almost too perfect. Right, okay. So let me show you some ways that we can humanize this and make it sound more human. I'm gonna double click over here. We've got our drum rack over here. We've got our separate sounds here. So let's just come over to one of the sounds. I'm just gonna open this up. Let's also open this up so we can see our sounds here. So all I gotta do is just click on one of these that are playing. So we've got this closed hi-hat. And the first thing that we can do is we could change the velocity setting. And velocity setting means that when you hit a note softly, it's gonna play more softly or at a lower volume. And when you play a note harder, it's gonna have a higher velocity and it's gonna play the sound a bit louder. So I'm gonna turn this up to about 70% so that we get more dynamics in the amount of velocity that's used. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click and just copy that value to all the siblings, which means it's gonna copy it to all the other sounds in this kit. So now everything's velocity controlled. So if we come back over to our MIDI, you'll see that some of the sounds have a variation in the velocity level, right? Right? That gives us a variation of the volume that's being played. And that alone makes a pretty big difference in giving a more human sort of rhythm. And probably want to bring the volume down here. When you set the velocity, sometimes it'll make things louder initially. All right. And then, for example, uh, these here, those are a bit loud. So let's, I just clicked here. So that will highlight all of the open hi-hats here. And then I can just bring this down. A little too low. Cool. And I notice those drum fills have a bit more kind of swing to them as well. But let's uh, come in and we'll play with those a little bit more. So if you take this, Okay, that's pretty low there, so. We'll bring this down a little bit too. That's the first approach you could take to humanizing your drum beats. So the second thing that I would recommend to you is something called choking. And usually you're gonna do this with hi-hats and that's exactly what I'm gonna work on here. And I believe these are the two sounds we're using. Right, so what choking does is naturally when a open and closed hi-hat are being played, they're being played on the same hi-hat. So you can't play both parts at the same time. So when you hit a closed hi-hat after an open hi-hat, it closes that sound and it replaces it with the closed hi-hat. So it's unnatural to have an open hi-hat playing over and longer while a closed hi-hat is playing. So we wanna take care of that. So what we're gonna do is just click here, the IO section. And what this does is this allows us to find, uh, it looks like we, We've got the sounds right here. 
we could find choke and we just put these on the same choke number. So that way, when one plays, the other one cancels out. If we notice over here, we've got our open hi-hats here. And then right after this hi-hat, we've got a closed hi-hat. So this is going to make this one shorter and this one longer. And let's There we go. So that sounds much more natural as well. And that's going to give you more of a live feel, a natural sounding drum kit. So next we get into a modulation. This is where things can start to get interesting. So let's work on the closed hi-hat here. And I'm just going to right click on this and switch from simpler to sampler. And it'll keep all the other settings from simpler while we, we switch it over. But we want some of the extra features. And in this case, we want the modulation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on an LFO. And then we've got this kind of frequency range. And this is kind of going to give us a bit of a random. We're going to turn off retrigger because we want this to kind of keep a certain movement. And then we're going to just put a little bit of variation here on the volume, on the panning, and just slightly on the pitch. We don't want to go overboard on the pitch, but let's just go a little less than 1%, like half a percent, all right? And if we solo this, closed hi-hat. We start noticing more movement. If I exaggerate this, we, we can really hear that panning kind of move, but we don't want it to be totally noticeable. We kind of want it to be more subtle. Just like with the pitch, if we turn the pitch up too much, It starts sounds like, sounding like it's bending, and we don't really want that. We just want it to, to be much more subtle. So once again, we could back this off. I'm just trying to show you so that you could hear what's happening. And this way, even with the velocity that we've set here, with the extra LFO, nothing's ever going to play exactly the same, which is exactly what you would want out of a more human feel. So that's our third approach to making more humanized sounding drums. Now, we've really only worked with volume here and a little bit of panning. We haven't really even worked with the timing of the parts. Everything is still playing on the grid. It just, because of the volume changes, it sounds more natural. But we, we don't necessarily want things playing on the grid as well. So there's a couple things that we can do. One that I recommend is we can drag in a groove. So if we come over here to grooves, we could find a, a groove that we like. I think I'm going to go with this. So if we drag this in, then we can apply it to this. Now we could either just drag this on top onto the clip, or we can highlight the clip and then come down here to groove and then choose that groove. So by default, it sets it to 100% timing. All right. And as you can hear, it really changes the groove a lot. So we want to play with the percentage of this. And as you can hear, it's really starting to change. So we don't need that much of a percentage change to get an interesting feel. So let's go with, let's say, 20%. So that's changing the timing. In fact, if I were to create a MIDI track here, and we could take the MIDI from the R8, so like so, and just record, 
we'll see where on the grid these parts are now playing. All right, so if we look and we get in close, we'll notice that there's parts that are off the grid and on the grid, off the grid here. So this creates like a little bit of a looser timing. Like if we come over here, this is a little bit early. If we come here, this is a little bit late. So we get like a nice little swing to this groove. So that definitely gives it a, a, a more feel. And then to make things even a little bit more random, we literally can turn up random here, maybe 7%, 8%. And that'll make sure that even with this groove, the groove is not played exactly the same way every time it loops. So the ear has all these subtle differences. Right? And if we wanted the velocity to be matched up to this groove, if we turn this all the way up 100%, we'll hear the, the volume changes uh, quite a bit different. That's good here. There's just like a big kick and everything else is super quiet. So if, if I slowly turn this up, we could start taking a little bit of the personality of the volume changes in this groove as well. So this is a, another thing that can affect the overall groove. I'm gonna bring this down to 11% eh, is probably fine. So now we've got all this variation in volume and timing, which is great. The next thing that I wanna do, and I won't do this on a lot of the sounds, but some of the sounds can benefit from this. So let's go ahead once again and we can play with the closed hi-hat here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come over to MIDI and then on velocity, we're gonna assign the velocity to the sample offset. And then we could change the amount in which this happens. Now what's gonna happen here is now instead of every time the hi-hat is played, it's going to start at a different point, depending on the velocity of the note that's hit, whether it's a higher velocity or a lower velocity. So what we want to do is we want to set this not to a positive, but to a negative, because we want the harder velocity to play right from the beginning and the the softer ones to play somewhere in the middle, so it's gonna give a slightly different tone. So let's just do reverse. Let's, let's make it kind of extreme so we can really hear what's happening here. And then if we look, we'll notice that the starting point is different every time. It's moving pretty quickly, so it's kind of hard to notice. What I can do here is slow down the tempo quite a bit. And then we can really see kind of where the starting points are hitting. Right? We get quite a bit of variation, but once again, we usually want our variation to be a bit more subtle. So we'll just do it right around there. And we'll bring this back up. And we can do the same thing with other sounds as well, but I'm just using this as an example. I just uh, probably wouldn't do it with the kick drum because you usually want that full snap of the transient that you're not gonna get when you're using this effect. But now as you can see, with all these subtle things that you can do to the groove and the feel and the volume and the velocity, you get a massively more humanized sounding drum part. So I hope this helps. I hope you get something out of it. Now go make some great music. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.